Hey everyone, um, yet another day in preschool school Um Had I a roommate, it wouldn't be so boring, but my roommate's not here yet, and uh, so it's rather like you know, this is you know, this is my apartment. Silence. <laughs> um, but you know, I still I I, I hung out with a um, uh, friend of mine who uh, she was um, I knew her from two years ago, and uh, so we you know, talked and hung out and walked around. That was cool, and um, then she had to go to work, uh, so came back and uh, started reading uh, Sun Tzu's Art of War. Right here. And um, I haven't actually gotten to the actual text. Right now I'm just reading the intro and the foreword and all that, which is basically just descriptors of um, the warring states period and Sun Tzu, if, when he was, if he was really, if he really existed, if he was born when they saved the day and all. So there's a whole, you know, background to the art of war. And it's interesting. And the reason I'm reading this book actually is because uh, me and my friends uh, made a book club. I don't really like calling it a book club because I keep thinking of Oprah. So, rather, you know, I don't know what we call it. We like to call it the pretentious club because the idea is to read all the pretentious books or, um, you know, to read all the classical works. Not all. We to read some of the classical works. Um, you know, things like Wealth of Nation, um, uh, Origin of Species, uh, uh, Das Kapital, and uh, yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. So the first round of voting ended up with the, uh, the Art of War getting more votes. So I'm reading it now. And um, yeah, it's, it's interesting until now. And uh, it, it's um, let me sort of rethink my Civ 4 strategies. <laughs> So when I actually get into the, the Art of War book, um, I think I'll, I'll also, you know, learn a lot. Um, what else? Uh, one of my profs is actually my neighbors, so that's interesting. I'm, I'm taking two of her courses, and uh, it seems really cool. So it's kind of this is this is cyclical. You sort of end up having your professors as your as your neighbors. Um, <laughs> what else? Um, I should I should I should just know this and spew. Oh yes, actually, um, two things that I've been sort of working on. Um, uh, one is uh, I'm sort of uh, sketching out movie ideas in my head um, for you know I have a, a studio name with nothing on it uh, registered called the Studio 33 Janvier, which it means studio, uh, January 33. I could put the link on the site, but there's not going to be really anything uploaded there for a long while. Um, I think in Cycle I'll be trying to make movies. I don't know if I'm going to use that studio name under these movies because the idea is actually to make a key movies with these. And um, the, other, the moves that I would do in Cycle would not be key movies, just be, you know, just movies. English, Canadian, not even, I guess. North American movies. Um, and then the other thing that I've been working on, well actually first I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys my, a little bit of my movie ideas, but not enough. Um, the first one is actually, uh, it's a story of three, uh, till I have three guys, I, I'm, I'm hoping for four, but I can't think of a fourth one, so I guess it'll be three, who, um, who are both sort of uh, both, are all three sort of weird in their own way. Um, they're all geeks, and uh, they hang out, and um, the main character um, works at a call center and uh, treats it as a war, and has like flashbacks of calls and um, you know PTSD from the call center, and uh, he's also paranoid delusional. And um, his two other friends, uh, one of them works at a laundromat, but doesn't actually work there, and um, so he's just 
thinks he works alone, and then it checks in the mail, you know, it's going to come any day. Uh, and he's actually, and he's afraid of the day, so he only comes out at night. And the other person, um, friend, he just lives somewhere else, and he also sky skypes in, he's also some kind of weird extreme place. Anyway, so these three guys, um, well, the, the main character falls in love with um, his neighbor, and she, um, you know, you know, the main character thinks that she's going to get kidnapped by the government. So their plot is to try to stop it. But she, she isn't going to get kidnapped by the government. Because that's all a delusion of him. Or is it? No. That would be kind of the basis. And this would all be done in sort of the Cadian dialect and all that. With subtitles in English and French. And then uh, the other one is... Um, we kind of a little resistance slash spy thriller in a post Quebec independence Canada ruled by an extremist party um, that is taking sort of a extreme you know martial law type measures to um, um, keep Canada whole from from sort of blowing itself up through other sort of separatist activities and. Um, and the people there are just, uh, they're just, they're, it's sort of suspend democracy and all these things. So I guess that the main character is, uh, I'm not quite sure what their aim would be yet, if they're trying to get democracy back or if they're fighting to, I don't know, I'm not quite, but it would be something like that. Uh, that's kind of tricky though, because it can easily fall into really controversial territory. Um, yeah, so those are the two things that I was thinking of. Uh, the other thing is that I've been trying to sort of see if there's a or weave together a maritime blogosphere because there's a there's a Japanese blogosphere it's a quite a vibrant community with these people you know um, sort of linked to get together making collabs um, you know doing all this crazy stuff and there's a big community behind it which is great and uh, now that I'm in Canada um, I could participate as part of that community uh, as like, kind of like an expat like chemist in Japan style um, but I, I, w I think it would be nice to have a community like that here too. Um, there's no reason why we shouldn't have one. And then, um, so the Maritimes actually is, is in New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and Prince Island together. And um, so I went around looking on YouTube if I could find any vlogs. I found very few vlogs. Uh, a lot of them were the, the vlogs that I did find were sort of one shot, two shot deals uh, by kids often uh, there's one vlog in particular which it's a, it's a teenager but I think she, she possibly could have she possibly could continue it and have sort of a vlog um, it's not I don't have anything against kids it's just, it's just um, it's, it's a bit more complicated to, to have YouTube meetups and all that when you've got kids or teenagers. Teenagers it's a bit easier, but when they're like twelve or something, that's not that's not gonna work. Um, and then there's one one guy I found which looked really interesting, but then he was actually a Quebecer, so I don't know I don't know. I, I had the YouTube little sort of map thing to tell me who 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 uploaded something in a certain area and somehow it, it caught someone from Montreal or something. I don't know. I don't know how that works. But um, yeah, and the, the other things I found it was like a P90X training vlog. A lot of people seem to be doing those, and that's not that's not really what I'm looking for. And then there's, of course, there's Andrew Bravener or Bravener. I don't know how he pronounces his name. In fact, and but um, I don't know, forty, fifty thousand views. I don't know if he's going to cooperate cooperate so much with me. You know. Anyways, uh, it's getting to ten minutes, so I might as well end this here. Take care, guys. Surfing long vlog.